Hello and welcome to part 4 of Cole Copters Garden Allotment Corner. As you can see we've done lots more work and we've been battered by the storms as you've probably seen on the news uh, this year. Um, we've done lots and lots of changes. We've even put this reed fencing up and other um, plants are starting to come up now. This is the seating area that we had planned if you ever remember. That's your fertiliser bucket. And there's the seating area. We've got some nice wood bark, and it's somewhere where you can sit and have fun, a rest and eat your lunch. There's some flowers in this flower bed, and they've, they're already starting to come up. And as we pan around, there's my gooseberry bushes, which I think they are. And this is the nice little area that we can sit. And this is going to be where the fruit trees go, like the small fruit bushes and stuff like that. And I've made a lot of changes over there. But let's go and have a look. We've already started blooming some plants in and we've got some irises up already. Spring is definitely on its way in here. And I've got some carrots in here. And already, as you can see, they're already starting to come up. Carrots, that was one of the sensors. Um, and also, I've connected the force field, I call it the wind turbine force field, because just in case there are slugs, it runs on the copper strip. It doesn't have to be straight, but it's only an experiment. And it runs along this little reed fence that I've built here. This is another area that needs digging over. And a lot of this couch grass, this stuff. I've been digging it and digging it over just to get rid of it. But there's still loads of it left. Um, it's unbelievable this stuff. It spreads like there's no tomorrow. As we come over to here, I've put another lo load another row of potatoes but they say you always use potatoes on your first lot because then it actually apparently kills all the weeds but I'll have to wait and see if that's true on this side here I've always also packed me my, um, my veg really tightly because I don't want weeds to grow and seed and once you start seeding then you'll never get rid of the weeds and this bit here there's onions in there here's a path and I've got also another sensor Another sensors there. Uh, this bit is what my sister started doing, as you can see. But I think it needs redoing, to be honest with you, because it looks a bit weedy. Here we've got some flowers to attract the bees, and also they look nice as well. And it breaks it up a little bit. This, on this section here, we've got onions. We've got onions on here growing, as you can see already. The onions are starting to come up. But I'm going to have to get a weed in between the onions. But as they're getting a little bit bigger, so it, they're not as easy to disturb. Because I think that'll be the best option. I've also got some more flowers here popping up as well. It's just to attract the insects and the bees and stuff like that. So that it helps in pollination. Right. Here's the shed. This is the wind turbine that I built. Now, basically, it's just a washing machine motor with some hand-built fans and it's not very windy today unfortunately but that will eventually charge a car battery and that will give me a little bit extra power um, the, the wind speed here now is only about 2 or 3 mile an hour and um, what happens with that you see it's going to be connected right down onto that copper strip that runs all the way around the whole a lot of my allotment I've still got the back end to do. As you can see, the wind is not that strong today at all. Well, it's just only just turning that over. Right. This is the little, I call it like a little patio area with another sensor on there. As we pan back, you see how big the allotment is. It's quite a decent size. Um, I've held it on with brackets. It's made out of metal. And basically what it is, it's uh, the wind turbine, as you can see, it lies down the back. As it spins it creates uh, electronic electricity. Not much electricity, but it does the job. Right, on to the next addition. We used to have that plastic um, greenhouse, but that was a load of rubbish and it didn't really survive in the wind. So I've built this. And what I built, it's all out of old conservatory, polycarbonated uh, rooftop window stuff. 
and I've used a couple of the windows also as you can see um, from the conservatory but obviously the conservatory didn't look like this I've just made it into a quick and easy greenhouse we're using two pallets and I've got this mesh here it's not fastened on you don't need it to be you just walk in and out and it just stops butterflies okay so we're inside and I'll tell you it's warm in here I've made a makeshift trough it doesn't have to be the best thing and that's growing tomatoes already I've got tomatoes growing you don't have to go out there folks and buy stuff as you can see here that is actually the tomato um, the old greenhouse <laughs> so you can see how rubbish that was it's got an opening window a little opening window like that <laughs> but like I say it doesn't have to be the best but as you can see there's a fly trying to get in oh, oh, oh. And it works a treat, but this polycarbonate stuff, solid as a rock. Right, over here I've got sweet peppers, and it's really a good greenhouse because already the sweet peppers are starting to come up. And in here, as you can see, see on there, look, look, you can see that folks, I've got cucumbers. I've never grown cucumbers before, and as you can see again, there's a bit more of the greenhouse. And... Uh, the, cu the cucumbers are actually starting to come up as well, which is a good, a good sign. And it is really warm in here. It's just made, like I said, it's made all out of junk. You can see. It doesn't have uh, all that creaking, by the way. It's the polycarbonate in the sun. It actually expands and contracts, so you can actually hear it creaking a lot. So it really does that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out. Oh, I've got an overhang. I mean, I mean it's not the best, but it's, the best of it is is the price free. There's Mark One turbine there. That was damaged in the storm. That one, as you can see, one of the blades is missing a piece off it. But it did work. But the Axius turbine. Well, let's see, can you see that, folks? Um, where I leave it up there, I don't know. Right, by here. right there's my water butt system. There, all that works street. Um, I've got an outside tap there one bit for like watering cans oh that's part of the conservatory which I'll probably use for something else the beam as you can see by the spotlights um, hose pipe going there straight into the greenhouse this area here it's going to be a bit this is going to be grassy basically you need somewhere to sort of relax and sit down and, and you can't really put anything on this bit really because there's no room here's a tree here obviously I think it's an apple tree but I'm not too sure because I got this one site and the buds are coming up already but what I've done to keep the weeds at bay I've also got a bit of plastic I did got some got dug out the weeds as much as I could put the plastic down and then I used some of the wood bark put it over the top and made a frame as you come round here I've got a, I bought myself a plum tree already the buds are coming up so that's also a good sign in here I've got some rhubarb but like I said it's the weed problem again and I'm going to have to wait for the rhubarb to come up next to it there's going to be strawberries and if you can see the wire frame you can also see that on the wire frame uh, there was a, a little uh, one of those little plastic greenhouse things but obviously that's gone this needs digging over again there's another sensor and we're going to read fence the back also of the polycarbonate stuff so it, if you ever want to make your own greenhouse it's really good you can cut it with a saw uh, you only need basic tools and it's really lightweight and easy to use and you can cut it into any shape you want so what I suggest you do you, you go around to your local go around to your local uh, window manufacturer and we've taken that down, down and uh, see what you can come up with they always give it you for free and don't like tipping it themselves. Let's have another look. Oh, let's have a look in the shed. Like I say, it's all got nothing. It's a big turbine. Just wish the wind was a bit windier today, in one way, so you could see it going for sure. Right, folks. Here we go. Here's the, here's the shed with some vast improvements. I've got a little sensor there with a station. Help me. An outhouse, as they call it in the old days. 
for storing the odd bits and pieces. Okay, chaps, here we go. We've got the kettle, stove goes here, workbench, and jars for all your seeds to go in and nails. Some of the kids have already started planting stuff. Got a pan there, frying pan, my cups, so you never get hungry. Uh, that's about it, folks. So I hope you enjoyed this show, and don't forget to stay tuned for part five on the allotment, and we'll see what we can grow next week. And I hope you enjoy yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, and there's more videos coming soon. Au revoir. And if there's anything that you want me to show off, uh, uh, any any requests or anything like that, don't forget leave a comment. See what I can do. I'll get it right back to you. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching.